story in the town of Huntington in Suffolk County. There is a church that has served as a beacon for the community since colonial times, and now that steeple is being restored to its origins. Inside the old First Presbyterian Church on Main Street in Huntington, parishioners are busily preparing classic Christmas decorations they'll sell to raise money for the church's community outreach. But they're equally excited about the scaffolding that's risen on the steeple, which towers over the community in preparation for its makeover. As you drive into town from the west end, you see the steeple way up in the sky, and it just sort of welcomes you to this wonderful town. As it has for more than 230 years, the now weather-worn steeple was built in 1784 after a previous steeple was torn down by invading British troops. During the American Revolution, the British Army decided to stay right here in Huntington. They were quartered here and used that sanctuary as a stable, as an armory. Reverend Miller is overseeing a million-dollar renovation of the church, first founded in 1658. Its rich history dots the walls and hallways, from photos of church fathers dating back a century to a bell that once rang from the previous steeple more than 300 years ago. It, too, was plundered by the British troops. They stole the bell to uh, use it for bullets against the uh, local armies. Fortunately, the British never melted down the bell, and it was recovered after the war. Now the focus is on stripping and repainting the steeple's faded wood exterior. The renovation will include restoring the church's original rounded windows design. It's wonderful at Christmas time in the in the um, in the windows. We put little candles, so it's truly a beacon at, at the holidays. The work inside the scaffolding is scheduled to be completed by early December when the restored steeple will once again remind Long Islanders of their colonial origins. And joining us now, the Reverend Ann Stewart Miller and John Collins. He's with the Historical Committee and a trustee with the Old First Presbyterian Church, and you are the pastor there, Reverend. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So how's the work going? Because I know we've had some better weather since, right? We've made pretty good progress. Uh, the uh, contractor is maybe 75% done. He's removed uh, a large amount of material that is being restored and uh, then will be uh, reinstalled. Uh, but the weather's getting cold and it's hard to paint. But still, Reverend, you must love seeing them out there. I love seeing them and I love greeting them in the morning. You can hear the knocking of nails going into the <laughs> shingles and it's a, it's a wonderful experience. Yeah, have we got colonial nails for it? I mean, I, I wouldn't be shocked. We have a picture right here. Uh, why don't you show this, John? Uh, the, I thought this was quite remarkable. Hold it up to this camera over here right. and get it right up to the face uh, a little bit. The church is the third one that served the congregation, uh, rebuilt after the the British tour the uh, second building down uh, during the Revolutionary War period. It was inspired by this uh, central design from the British Carpenter by Francis Price. When was and that? An English pattern book was published in London in 1733. Come on, that's almost Though, 300 years ago. And it was ago. one of the most commonly owned uh, pattern books or builder's guides in the colonies though the building wasn't built until 1784. This is a landmark church, is it not? It is a National Register property and a local town of Huntington designated landmark. We're seeing the steeple before the scaffolding was put on it. How will it change, Reverend? Well, for one thing, there won't be pieces falling on the sidewalk, which is, we are grateful for that. But it's going to be um, certainly much more stunning visually um, than it has been. There's been lots of peeling paint, uh, things that come down, and we're just delighted that it's going to look brand new. And you're trying to follow the sort of the original intent of it, too, right? Exactly, exactly. This, this guy can say right. more about that. Well, you know, I'm kind of fascinated, John, about how the church was uh, like a battleground during the Revolutionary War with each side sort of trading the property back and forth. Talk a little bit about how it went back well, and forth. It was it was interesting that uh, Suffolk County and Huntington was more patriotic than Nassau County that was more <laughs> Anglican and loyalist. Uh, the minister... You mean the Nassau wanted to stay with the British? And they did. Suffolk wanted right. to... And we were more inclined toward New England <laughs> and the Patriots. The pastor at the time was a very outspoken patriot, and so the church suffered dramatically, first as a uh, uh, quarters for troops, then as a stable, and uh, then to be torn down to build a fort. They stole the bell. And they did. But you got it back through an unusual... It, a prisoner was thrown in the brig in a warship, saw the bell down in the hold, <laughs> and then after the war was over, petitioned the British and we got it back. You know, this must be, uh, you know, this must give you lots of soup for your sermons, uh, Reverend, uh, when you think about the history of the building you're standing in. It truly in. does, and it's amazing, probably five or six times a year, I talk about the righteousness, but also the determination of those uh, original members who came back from Connecticut after the war and built from scratch 
this beautiful building, third generation building uh, in, in Huntington. Yeah, and as I say, it serves as a beacon. It's the kind of thing in town that you wouldn't notice that you didn't notice it until it was gone, right? Exactly. And then you right. realize, wow, that was really part of my town. Right. And right. for a lot of folks, it is. No? It is. And right. it's also amazing to see how many people have, for the first time, at least in a long time, notice the church. People can drive by it, see the town hall on the other side of the road, but with that scaffolding on the steeple, it's amazing how many people are paying attention. Yeah, you might get some more We might, we might get some. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, That's I'm right. Sure you would. But you got a pretty healthy congregation. We right? do. I see a lot Very of people much. there. How many people go to this church? We have about 400 members uh, on the rolls right now, and uh, we've had uh, a wonderful response to this uh, capital campaign that we have right. been running to restore the steeple. Yeah, and it's not just the steeple, it's the entire grounds. Exactly, no? yeah. What else are you doing at the Church. We have restored a number of rooms inside the, uh, the uh, building itself, gutted the kitchen, uh, gutted our parish hall, uh, different classrooms. There will next summer there will be work done on the parking lot, re repaving, redoing sidewalks. New parking and so lot. Forth. And, and you say gutted, but there's all new equipment in there's there. There's all new equipment, that's right. Yeah, refrigerators, stoves, everything. I mean, they is, were loving it, the coast. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> This, I would imagine, it's possible that even mariners, probably, when they'd see it in the fog approaching, what, from the west? Would, it could be like a landmark or even a beacon right. for them. No, yeah. not a lighthouse, but uh, at least you knew where you were. Now, from up in the steeple, you can clearly see Huntington Harbor and Long Island Sound. So that's true, yes. So will it be safe for folks to go into the steeple and get a view afterwards? <laughs> Well, I take they, the confirmation class there every year. It's sort of a high point of uh, uh, their uh, program, and uh, it's uh, sort of special because not too many people get to go up there. Yeah, How many confirmations? Go ahead. A little closer to the heavens when you do that. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've had many confirmation classes over the years sign their names that we are preserving uh, for posterity during this. So that'll be preserved. Yeah. How is this being paid for? Because overall, it's quite a big chunk of change, no? Right. Well, this is a $300,000 project. The scaffolding alone is about 35000 The capital fund campaign is uh, about, uh, oh, maybe not quite uh, three-quarters of the way through. We've been very fortunate with several uh, very generous grants, one from the New York Landmark Conservancy, their Sacred Sites program, and another very generous one from the uh, David Lyon Gardner Foundation. But uh, you're still taking donations, I would imagine. Oh, absolutely. The congregation has supported it generously. Well, Reverend, why is this important for folks, say, who don't go to your church or beyond those who maybe care about history? Why do you think it's really important, this it's renovation? A, it's a community landmark, and it's been part of the history of Huntington for 358 years. And so a lot of people in the town perhaps are not members now, but they've been married there. They've been had their children baptized there. They've been buried there. So it's, it's really a, a community church. No question. It's part of our yeah. history. So when will it be completed and unveiled? Weather depending. <laughs> I'm hoping uh, probably mid-December. Uh, as wow. I say, most of the uh, parts that could be taken off uh, are in the shop being redone, and then it'll be just final coats of paint after they're reassembled. So in time for the, the, the Christmas celebrations and uh, masses and observances. Right. Right. Weather permit. Anything special that you'll do for that particular unveiling? Oh, we will have a dedication ceremony. Uh, and you we will try to we, be there. Yeah, thank you. Well, we really appreciate you coming in at this holiday Thanksgiving. Gives us something to look forward to for the holidays to come. Reverend Ann Stewart Miller and John Collins with the Old First Presbyterian Church on restoring our roots. And it's going to be something. Thank right. you very thank much. Thank you very much. And we'll be right back.